Okay, I think we can start. <clears throat> Good morning at all. I'm Luca uh, from Italy. I work for a, a Drupal shop in Italy uh, called WellNet. I'm the maintainer of um, the web profiler module, which is in, in the Devil Suite, and some other Drupal 8 modules. I'm a teacher. I teach uh, Drupal uh, in Italy. Uh, and uh, today, I want to show you a, a, a project we have built uh, in the last month uh, to solve a problem we, we, we have. Uh, and I want to show you how we implement this system using some multi microservices architecture. Um, we, I think we all agree that uh, PHP is not the, um, the best choice for every problem, every problems. Uh, so maybe uh, we can choose uh, some other technologies to implement something. Uh, and also, for example, SQL maybe is not the correct way to store and retrieve every kind of information. Uh, and then maybe somewhere on the internet, uh, someone already built some piece of code that we can use in our system so we don't have to re-implement it. And in this, uh, in this way, Drupal 8, for example, could be part of a more complex uh, and distributed system. And we have different components that communicate through HTTP, for example. Okay, so in this presentation, which is uh, analyze this system uh, to solve uh, a problem we have, and the problem is that uh, Composer uh, is difficult to set up and learn for some kind of people um, because it requires uh, some degree of knowledge, uh, it requires a, a big amount of RAM to, to run on shared hosting, it's difficult to, to use. Um, so we we think it um, would be very useful to to build an interface to choose uh, modules and themes for a, a Drupal 8 uh, website, for example, and have a remote system build the system, build the the, the website, uh, and then uh, provide us a, a a zip file to to download with all inside all the vendor. Uh, packages, uh, this, mm, dependencies, and so on. So uh, we build uh, such a service uh, in a microservices way uh, using Drupal 8 as front end. We have uh, 10 Docker containers, uh, some Go programs, uh, a couple of RabbitMQ queues, uh, one Elasticsearch on uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, one Redis, uh, uh, obviously one Drupal 8 website. So uh, the main point of this presentation is that uh, those are, aren't a lot of things. So uh, we, we, we can build the, the, the first demo in a, in a couple of weeks. Uh, you don't have to, to, to be Netflix to use uh, microservices. Okay, you can build very, very small system uh, with this methodology. For instance, we, this is the, the diagram of our application. We, we have some Docker container for Apache, PHP, PHP FPM, MySQL and Redis for uh, Drupal 8, the Elasticsearch. Then when uh, a user requests a build of, of a project, we enqueue request in uh, a RabbitMQ and then use some Go and uh, Docker images to build the, the website. Then we have a notifier that communicates back to Drupal which, uh, with a REST endpoint uh, to a browser with WebSocket. Okay, let me show you a, a very quick uh, video about how the system uh, uh, works for a final user. 
So you, you go to the website, you log, log in, then you can create a project. You can choose a, a Drupal standard or distribution. If you choose to build a, a Drupal project, you have to insert uh, the name of the project, the version of the core, a description. And then you can start uh, adding extension, like modules and themes for Drupal. So for example, uh, you can add uh, commerce, which are, depends on some external PHP packages. For example, you can add the val or uh, monologue, which is another Drupal module that requires an external PHP dependency. So you cannot use monologue only if you build a Drupal website with Composer. Then you can choose to receive automatic uh, updates uh, if you want to install developer tools uh, and so on. Then when you click build, the, the role of Drupal ends. We enqueue a message to RabbitNQ that uh, will be consumed by a, a Go program that spin up a Docker container that builds your, your package. Then you can, after a couple of minutes, download it, extract it on your local machine, for example. And if you look at the, at the content of this package, you have uh, the modules you have required with for example, every module that depends on the module you choose, and also in the vendor folder, all the dependencies of the, of the modules you choose and the core, Drupal core. Okay, let's start uh, to uh, analyze how we uh, build this system. So we start with the RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is a an open source uh, message broker uh, that implements this advanced message queuing protocol. You can download it on rabbitmq.com and it allows two or more microservices to co communicate asynchronously uh, by sending and messaging uh, in a published subscriber model. So someone posts a message, some other components consume messages to perform a task. Uh, in this example, Drupal should delegate uh, long-running tasks or tasks that are more easily implemented in some other technologies uh, to, uh, to a queue. So we can use RabbitMQ as middleware between our microservices. Uh, we let Drupal post a message to a queue as some other process uh, consume these, uh, these messages. Uh, for instance, in, in this way, the the UX of the Drupal front-end could be better because uh, we, we don't have to wait for Drupal to perform some, some tasks, but we can come later uh, to our website, for example. Okay, in this example, in the, in the next example, um, we will define a method producer in PHP, in a, for example, a Drupal custom module. <coughs> and a message consu messages consumer uh, as a Go process, okay? Uh, just two words about um, how RabbitMQ works. Uh, okay, in RabbitMQ we could have a different virtual host. Each of them have multiple exchangers that receive messages from channels and dispatch those messages uh, to queue based on a routing key. Uh, but we want to uh, start simple, so we have one virtual host, use the default exchange. Uh, the default exchange uh, dispatch all messages sent to a routing uh, key to the queue with the same name of the routing key. So it's very simple. In the next example, the, the queue is called builds. Um, we need an external PHP library to, communic to simplify the communication uh, with the RabbitMQ, uh, the, so we, we bring in, uh, in our website uh, this uh, library using Composer, of course. Uh, so in our custom module, we create a composer.json file uh, with some instruction. We, we define a name, 
the type uh, must be Drupal module, uh, a description, and then a list of required external dependencies. In this case, is the PHP MAQP li library and the version. Then on your, our um, PHP code, we define uh, the queue name, builds in this case, and uh, an array, okay, we are in Drupal, so an array of uh, uh, some values. For example, we, we send out uh, <coughs> that the type is Drupal, name, some project name, core version, and so on. Then we open a connection to, to the RabbitMQ server uh, that responds uh, on a host name, a port, uh, with a username and password, and the virtual host, which is the la latest par parameter. Then we retrieve uh, a channel from the connection. We uh, declare the queue. So we, we tell RabbitMQ that we will have a queue called the builds. This because we don't know if the consum consumer of the producer start first. So we, we need to declare the queue on both sides of the, the connection. Then we uh, prepare uh, a message and we publish the message to an exchange without name because it's the default exchange with the routing key equals to the queue name we defined. And at the end, we close the, both the channel and the connection to free resources, of course. On the other side, we have a Go process that consume, consumes these uh, messages. Uh, Go is a, is a free and open source uh, programming language created uh, by Google. Uh, it is compiled and statically typed uh, language. Uh, is, is well suited for CLI applications, concurrent applications, servers, uh, um, and you can just download the standard toolkit from the Go website uh, and start write and compile your code easily because uh, all the tools you need are in the in the tool chain, and we choose uh, Go over. Node or Java or Python or something else, because Go is compiled in a single binary file that runs uh, directly on the host machine. No dependencies, no virtual machines, uh, uh, so it's very easily deployable everywhere. Uh, Go is concurrent by design, so write concurrent programs is uh, more easily than in other languages. It's strongly typed, so. This is good, but uh, it doesn't need a registrator of class interfaces like Java, for, for example. It's very opinionated, so you are enforced to maintain a, a, a very a shared style of how a program is written, uh, written uh, in Go. And it, in my opinion, it's not so difficult to learn, so why not? Uh, the Go toolchain is, uh, is very opinionated in the way that uh, you have uh, uh, in the, in the toolchain itself uh, um, a, a command to format the code. The, the, the coding standard of Go is defined by the, the Go uh, creators, so you don't have any possibility to uh, change the the format, so every Go program looks similar because the formatting styles guide are in the, in the tool chain. Uh, you can go build to compile uh, packages, and you, you can use go get to download and install packages and dependencies like Composer in PHP. So we use uh, go get to download an external library for Go to communicate with RabbitMQ. Uh, this also is a standard. The GoGet takes the um, HTTP endpoint of the same Git repository of the package. So it's every, uh, in every case is something like GitHub or GitLab or something else 
the vendor and the, and the package. In the go side, we define a struct uh, with the same uh, structure of the array posted uh, by, by Drupal. Uh, in this way, uh, we can use uh, uh, go to directly unmarshal the JSON object in the, into the struct. Uh, we can, uh, to, to let this uh, work, uh, the name of the member of the struct must make, match to the one sent by, by Drupal, but if you want to change something, just tag the member with the, the version in, uh, in the JSON object, for example. And then we can do, we, we do the, the, the same things, uh, the same thing as, as we, we done in Drupal. We connect to an endpoint with a username, a password, a host name, and a port. We rec um, connect to a, to a channel um, in this um, in this RabbitMQ server. We declare the queue also on this side of the connection because maybe this is start first, and then we start consuming messages that arrives to the builds queue. Uh, Go is uh, concurrent, so messages uh, is a, uh, a channel in, uh, in Go language, uh, and the range keyword will block the execution of the program until a message uh, arrives, and then it marshal uh, it, and we can use this message, the, the data from this message in our Go program. In, um, in our system, uh, we use those information to spin up a Docker container that builds the, launch the Docker, the composer install command that builds the website. Okay. Another component of this architecture uh, is uh, Elasticsearch. We use it as uh, a common storage for uh, data about uh, extension in, uh, uh, that are on Drupal.org. So when you build uh, your, you, when you configure your, your project on, the, on our website, you can just uh, start typing the name of, the, of a module or a theme, and we retrieve those information from this Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch server. Elasticsearch is a search engine. It's based on Lucene as Solar. Um, and it's uh, useful, useful uh, because it provides um, distributed, distributed uh, full text search engine with an HTTP interface so we can insert it in our microservices uh, architecture uh, and is uh, useful our common data storage in our case uh, we uh, use a go program to uh, store data into Elasticsearch and uh, a PHP code in a Drupal module to consume uh, read and extract data from from Elasticsearch okay start with go in the uh, Go side, we, we need another external library to connect to an Elasticsearch server. And then we uh, simply use this uh, library, the new client uh, method, to connect to a new URL and an index name. And then we uh, index some document to Elasticsearch. We, we need to specify the index name, the type of the document, an ID, the content, and uh, then we can uh, post this message to, to Elasticsearch. In, uh, in Go, there, are, there is a, a standard way to manage errors, uh, because uh, in Go, functions can return multiple values. And uh, usually the second, uh, the second value is the error. 
So, for, for, uh, for instance, in this example, the new client returned the client and maybe the error. If the error is not a nil, something goes wrong. So in this case, we, the only thing we can do if the, we cannot connect to the client is call this function, which is panic, that stop the program. Um, in this case, uh, we, we index a document. Uh, if if the, some error occurs, uh, just log some information and continue because it's not a, a, blocking, uh, a blocking error. On the PHP side, we also we need a, a, an external library, uh, this Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch. So we add it to our Composer JSON file and use Composer Update, for example, to uh, add this uh, library to our vendor folder. And then we use this library to uh, connect to the same Elasticsearch server. So we need the host. We are on Amazon, so the host is uh, Amazon machine. Then we set up an array with um, parameters. We have the, the index name, the type of the document, and the query that specify what we want to retrieve from, from Elasticsearch. In this case, we, we want to retrieve a, a document uh, with, with uh, a name equals devel. And then we um, perform a search on the, on the server and uh, use the results to build uh, an array uh, suitable for the autocomplete uh, functionality in, uh, in Drupal. So we have uh, an array of array, uh, arrays with uh, label and value as, uh, as key, because this is uh, how Drupal autocomplete uh, works. So in, uh, in our case, uh, we see that the Elasticsearch is very useful to produce data uh, for an autocomplete uh, field in, in Drupal. And um, this is, in, in Drupal 8 is, is very simple to, to do. Mm. We have just to define a, a new controller that reads the Q argument from the URL, performs a query to Elasticsearch, and return a JSON response uh, like this. And then uh, in the routing file of our module, we define a new route for this controller. And in the, in the form text field, we add the key autocomplete route name with this route name and Drupal 8 do the magic to have the autocomplete functionality. Okay. We can also let our microservices talk with some REST endpoint, so we can define uh, REST endpoint. E REST is a, is a way of providing interoperability between computer system on the internet, uh, because uh, REST compliant web services allow requesting system to access and manipulate textual representation of web resources using a an uniform and predefined set of stateless operation. Um, in, uh, in Drupal 8, REST is, uh, is baked in the, the core, thanks to the API first initiative. So it's very easy to, to expose an endpoint, a REST endpoint in, uh, in Drupal 8. And in the next example, we will define a REST endpoint using Drupal. Uh, and a Go code to post message to that, uh, that endpoint. On the Drupal.org websites, there is a lot of uh, complete documentation on how to build a REST endpoint. Basically, you have to create a plugin in a custom module in a very specific namespace. And then you can define a uh, a REST resource config in a YAML file in the, in the module, in the config install folder. 
we start with the plugin. Plugin in Drupal 8 are classes with some annotation on top of uh, on top of them. In this case, the annotation we use is a REST resource, which have an ID and a set of path. In this case, we only need the canonical one, so we define that project slash ID, which is a variable slash update status, is the endpoint to contact um, in this uh, in this REST endpoint, and then we. Um, we provide a function, in this case uh, called patch, that receives uh, the ID from the URL and the payload from the body of the HTTP request. And then we use this ID to retrieve the project from the type manager uh, storage. And then we use the status uh, value in the pay payload to change the status of our build for example, and then we return a, a resource response to the client. And in this, uh, in this case, we use this endpoint to update the status of a build with success or error from the, uh, we, we will see later, the a Go program. Go program. <clears throat> okay. Um, other than the plugin, we need uh, a configuration file into the module, in the custom module we, we, we have. Uh, this uh, configuration file uh, has an ID, a plugin ID, which is the same. We define it in the plugin annotation. The granularity could be resource or method, if we want to specify information for the whole resource or for single method. In this case, we have only one method, so it's the same. And uh, we see that the method uh, that our REST endpoint accept uh, is patch. Uh, the format is JSON. And we need to do a basic authentication before calling this, uh, this endpoint. Uh, in REST, uh, the HTTP method have a, a very specific meaning. So uh, you have to use the, the correct one when you uh, expose or consume a REST endpoint. Uh, we have get for retrieve a resource, post to create a resource, patch to update a resource, put to replace completely a resource, and delete to remove a resource. So for example, to extract information from a, a Drupal resource, we can use get and the URL of that resource. To create information, we use POST, and we also use POST to ask Drupal to do something on a resource. For, for example, we have this uh, update status on the entity 42 of the type project. On the other side, we, we have a Go program. In Go, uh, you don't need any external library to perform HTTP connection. You just have to uh, require this uh, be build a new uh, request uh, object from the HTTP package. Then uh, we can add uh, an header with the content type, JSON, because this is a JSON request. And then we use the default client of the HTTP package to do the request. If the response uh, status code is different uh, than 200, we have a valid response, and then we use uh, some Go code to read the response, and then we have uh, this information from the, the server. We can do uh, what, we need, uh, what we need to do. For, for, um, for example, in this case, uh, this is a patch uh, request, so we have a payload, and we post uh, this JSON object uh, with only status uh, to which means uh, success in, in this case. OK, obviously, we, we can do the opposite, opposite and uh, let Drupal consume some REST resources exposed from another microservice. 
And we can do this using the HTTP client service that is in the Drupal core that, use, that uses uh, the Gazol package to perform uh, the, the request. Uh, or maybe we can use the HTTP client uh, manager, which is a contrib module that leverages the Gazol service description feature. And this is very useful to abstract uh, how Gazol works. So uh, it's more easily to, to build a REST client in, uh, in Drupal 8. Of course, we can also use something different that REST. Uh, maybe we can use GraphQL to share information between microservices. GraphQL is a data query language uh, developed by Facebook. It isn't in, uh, in core like uh, REST, but there is a, a module, a contrib module to expose uh, the entity of a Drupal website through GraphQL. So it's very, it's very easy. Okay, the um, latest uh, way of interact between microservices or um, our system and the outside is uh, uh, WebSocket notification. WebSocket uh, is a uh, TCP-based protocol uh, that uh, uses HTTP to, to do the initial handshake, and then uh, uh, we can use WebSocket to communicate between a server and a browser, for instance, uh, to perform uh, real data notification, real time, uh, sorry, real time data notification. So in our system, uh, when the builds end, we post a WebSocket message to the browser to notificate the user that uh, the, the build is ready. So in, in the next example, we, we define a, a JavaScript code because uh, WebSocket run, runs in a browser in JavaScript to connect a remote WebSocket implemented in Go. Implemented in Go. On, the Go on the Go side, we need uh, uh, an external library because Go standard does not support uh, WebSocket. And then we can, uh, this is very similar to Node, if you use it. Uh, we define that uh, when we receive a request to a specific URL, we call uh, a specific function. In this case, when we receive a, a message on the WS endpoint, we call the message function. And then we start a server on a, on a port, on 88 in this case. When we receive a request, we use the, the library we, we download to upgrade the request to a WebSocket request. And then we use this WebSocket to write message to the client. And the content of the message, in this case, is uh, JSON, but could be whatever you want. Uh, another useful functionality of, uh, of Go is that you can defer the, the execution of a statement just before the, the, the function ends. Also, if the function called panic. So you, you can use this usually to free resources because Go calls this uh, statement in any case. On the client side, in a, in a, Drupal, uh, in a Drupal module or a Drupal theme, we can define a, 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 JavaScript, uh, a JavaScript file that uses the behaviors of, of Drupal JavaScript uh, facility. Uh, to attach a function and then start listening for a WebSocket on a specific endpoint. When a message arrives, uh, the, um, the, the browser calls the on message function, which is a callback that can parse the data and do whatever you want with this message. Uh, uh, of course, you can do the opposite also. So you can post data to a WebSocket endpoint. Okay. 
Mm, last, uh, last things I want to talk about is that uh, this, is, this architecture is more complex than having a single Drupal website uh, somewhere because we have a lot of different uh, services, maybe on different machines. Uh, so one important thing is that uh, you have to describe also the architecture of your system in code so you can version it uh, and you can uh, use some automated tools to deploy and maintain the infrastructure for you uh, because manually managing a microservices architecture would result, would result in an enormous time of overhead because you have multiple services deployed on multiple machines that communicate to each other. Uh, instead, uh, instead of doing uh, this manually, uh, if you have some standard management uh, tools, you can uh, build, test, deploy, configure, provision new host, or relocate services uh, automatically. And this is good because there is less work for us. Uh, in our system, we do this with Docker and Ansible, these two technologies. We can use uh, uh, Docker because Docker is a tool that can package an application and all its dependencies in a virtual container and then you can deploy this virtual container on any Linux server. Uh, and this uh, enable portability because uh, uh, you can just deploy the container and all your dependencies are into the container. Uh, but uh, uh, Docker itself uh, uh, is not useful to describe a, an architecture, only describe uh, every single container. So we need an orchestrator to manage multiple containers. The, um, the simplest one is uh, Docker Compose, which is a tool uh, that uh, reads from a YAML file and then starts uh, a set of containers uh, with uh, every, any information described in the uh, YAML file. Uh, in this example, uh, we have uh, an Apache server, so we define uh, the, the, the base image, which part uh, are exposed by the, the container. To, if we want to restart the container if something goes wrong, and the volumes that map uh, files or directory from the host machine to the container uh, environment. So for example, the Apache configuration, uh, the let's encrypt uh, keys and certificate, or, and, and the actual Drupal document route. The same, for example, for a database. For a database, we can use uh, a MariaDB, for example, image. Uh, and then we define some environment variables, uh, some ports, and this is the same as in uh, Apache. Or we can have a, a container for the PHP FPM process. Uh, this is, in this, in this case, you, uh, it uses a custom-made image, but it's the same. And uh, in our system, we have uh, container for Apache, one container for PHP FPM, one container for MySQL, one container for Redis, for the Drupal cache, one container for RabbitMQ, one container for the notifier, which is the Go process that communicated through REST and WebSocket, and a container for Drush to execute SSHD to connect with aliases remotely to, to Drush. And in, uh, in the development environment, we also have uh, a mail log container to catch the emails, uh, an Elasticsearch and Kibana, because on the dev environment, we don't use the uh, Amazon services, and a Blackfire IO container to performance tuning. OK, uh, but uh, at this point, you uh, have to install Docker on the server deploy your container, launch your container, uh, you have to do 
uh, a lot of uh, uh, tasks manually. Uh, we can use Ansible to do this for, for us, because uh, Ansible is uh, uh, an automation uh, tool that uh, automates software provisioning, uh, configuration management, and application deployment. And with Docker, with Docker and Docker Compose, it will allow you to describe or your service architecture in code, so you can version it, for example. Ansible is, uh, is very useful because it's agentless, so you don't need any daemon or tools running on a, on a server. Uh, the only requirement is that on the managed machines, uh, you have Python, and you can do a, a SSH connection to those machines. And then Ansible uh, uh, reads a list of hosts from an inventory file and performs a set of tasks uh, defined in a playbook. And those playbook uses modules to describe the operation to be executed on every host in your inventory. For example, um, this is a, a, an Ansible uh, playbook. Uh, the start of an Ansible playbook. We, we have a name, we say that we want this playbook to run on every host we have, and then we, we want to become a root to perform uh, the, the operations. And then we have a list of tasks. For example, we want to install uh, Python setup tools and Docker on the remote machine. Then we want to install uh, other tools needed to, uh, to run uh, and retrieve, for example, Docker Compose. And at, at, the, at the end of these tasks, on the remote machine, we have Docker and Docker Compose uh, deployed and uh, ready for, for us. And the, in the... In, the last step is to start the Docker daemon and to add, this is uh, Amazon, so the user we have is uh, this one, uh, add this user to the Docker group so it can run uh, Docker uh, directly. And then we copy our Docker Compose file to the server and run Docker Compose on it that starts up Every, every container we, we defined. So uh, we don't have to do anything on the server. Uh, Ansible do does for, do, do does for, for us. Uh, does for us. Uh, OK. Obviously, uh, we can improve our architecture, because at the moment, uh, every um, component other than uh, the Elasticsearch runs on, on Docker, but uh, in, in this case, Amazon uh, provides us a lot of uh, already implemented components that, that we can use to, uh, uh, for example, uh, implement a database with RDS, for example. We can replace our Redis uh, container with the uh, Amazon uh, Elastic Cache. We can replace the RabbitMQ container with uh, simple notification services we can use. Uh, at, at the moment, uh, Go doesn't run on Amazon Lambda, but maybe in future we could use Lambda to run uh, Go code. We can use S3 to uh, storage, and so on. Also, we can use uh, Kubernetes, for example, for the container we, that, that remains. Maybe this could be the next evolution of the of our architecture. So we, maybe we can need to uh, we, we need to use some different tools uh, for describe this architecture for Amazon, but the concept is the same. Okay, a couple of takeaway takeaways. Okay, uh, okay. Don't try to do anything with Drupal because maybe it's not the best best tool to to do everything. Uh, you should use Drupal for its best features. Okay, it's CMS, so user management, templating. It's very fast and and good to use to use Drupal. 
try Go because it's very interesting uh, language. Start small, so you don't have to buy 1,000 server, 100 uh, services, and so on. We, we, you, you can just start with all services in Docker containers on one server, uh, and then put all your infrastructure under version control because you can have, you are sure that everything works as you expected. Okay, this uh, this tool we we build is available uh, to uh, to everyone. It's called Composi. Uh, Composi.io is the website. You can compose core modules and teams, download uh, a zip file with all inside. You can build distribution, so you, if you want to try out uh, open social or content or lightning uh, and so on, you can build it on, on our system. You can choose uh, uh, the folder layout if you want the vendor directory in the document root or outside the document root. And you can subscribe for automatic updates and, and so on. Uh, just a, <clears throat> a quick slide about uh, okay, WellNet is hiring. So if you if you are interested in uh, in work uh, with uh, also in uh, in Go, Java, JavaScript, or on AWS uh, other than uh, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, send us an email. We we are looking for people from over the Europe, so uh, you're welcome. Okay, then don't forget to, to come uh, with the, uh, to the um, contribution sprint on Friday because we, uh, the Drupal needs a lot of uh, people to, uh, to go ahead. Uh, not only developers, also testers, writers, uh, designers, and so on, so uh, don't be shy. Uh, come to the contribution sprint. Uh, don't forget to uh, uh, rate this session if uh, if you want. And thank you. If you have any questions, there there is a mic. Hello, Luca. Thank you for uh, this nice tool and uh, your presentation. Just the question is uh, if uh, the Composi will in, in its build will create a, a Composer JSON file in the root so that I might uh, go on from the first build in a usual Composer way, updating and uh, evolving my, my application. Yes, we, we don't strip out the, both the Composer JSON and the Composer lock file from the package. So. If you want to to run Composer on your machine later, you are able to do so when you want. So we, it's not locked in to the to the platform. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>